Back to Salutations. If you can believe it, it's been 15 years since the first Twilight book came out. Stephanie Meyer made an announcement a couple of months ago that Midnight Sun, the retelling of the first book from the perspective of Edward, would finally be coming. So she was writing this book way back in the day, and then part of it got leaked online, and she got discouraged and stopped working on it, and I thought we were just never gonna see this book. But now, with Midnight Sun coming out on August 4th, Twilight is back on a lot of people's minds. I know it's a meme to say that something awful was still a better love story than Twilight, and that even all these years later it still gets ridiculed a lot, but all it really did wrong was get popular among teenage girls and their mothers, and that's not really a valid reason to hate on something. So if you do enjoy this series, either the books or the movies or both, then just keep enjoying them because they're fun and you shouldn't be ashamed about it. And yes, the books have their problems, and holy cow do the movies have problems, but like, they're still an enjoyable way to pass the time. I read the books again and watched the movies again recently, and like, yeah, there were things that bothered me, especially in the second Breaking Dawn movie where that forced fight scene, Alice is somehow able to see the werewolves in her vision, even though that was kind of a huge plot point that she was not able to see them, and that's why New Moon happened the way that it did, and anyway. Like, yeah, there are actual reasons to dislike things about Twilight, but oh, it's a stupid love story for teenage girls is not one of them. So like it if you like it, and if you don't like it, then why are you here? <laughs> now that I've gotten that out of the way and we can all be unashamed Twihards together, what would a Twilight makeup collaboration be like if I were the one designing it? I kind of pulled an Alice and went overboard with the eyeshadow ideas, and I also have come up with some eyeliners and lipsticks and lip glosses and a blush and a highlighter. As with my Disneyland video, there's also a couple of joke stupid ideas that I've included at the end of this. I'll start with the palettes. I ended up designing three separate seven pan eyeshadow palettes, each with their own theme. I've arranged them so that there's one pan in the center and the other six are surrounding it in a circle because seven is a weird number and I wasn't sure what else to do. The first palette is called The Cullens and it's seven jewel tone shades, each named for a member of the Cullen family. Since he is head of the family, Carlisle is in the center of the palette, and his color is a ruby red that I chose because of his career as a doctor and also his time with the Volturi. At the top is Esme, a honey topaz sort of color that I think reflects her warm heart. Clockwise from there, next up is Emmett, which is an emerald green to represent his affinity for outdoorsy activities. Next to him, of course, is Rosalie, a regal amethyst color fit for a queen. At the bottom of the palette is a bronzy shade, much like Edward's hair. On Edward's left is Jasper, which is a soothing sapphire shade because of his ability to influence the mood of people around him. Finally, Alice, a peridot sort of green that honestly was heavily influenced by the fact that the actress who plays Alice is named Ashley Green, so I kind of had to give her a green. <laughs> and this specific shade is a light, unique sort of gem color that goes well with a small, graceful, very weird vampire. <laughs> this palette ended up being sort of like a rainbow palette if the rainbow was going through a 2008 grunge phase. My second palette is called The Pack and it has seven neutral shades based on the fur colors of some of the shape-shifting Kuliu wolves. It was very easy to picture exactly what color I wanted for each wolf, but it was a lot harder to actually find those as eyeshadows because I usually don't pay much attention to my neutral shades, so this is exciting. <laughs> At the center of this palette is Sam, the leader of the pack. Sam's wolf form has black fur, so it's a black shadow. You get the picture. So the other shades I have, starting at the top and going clockwise, are Jacob, Quill, Embry, Paul, Leah, and Seth. I'm not crazy about three of these shades being various greys, but Paul had a lot more of a part in these stories than any of the other wolves that didn't get included, and I was tempted to boot out Paul and put in a shade for Emily instead, but I wasn't sure what color would really represent Emily, and she's not technically a part of the pack anyway, so Paul stayed in. And I don't really have that many grey eyeshadows, so the shade for Paul is actually a lipstick, but you get the idea. This is the sort of palette that I wouldn't look twice at and I would have absolutely no interest in if it didn't have any kind of fun theme to it. But if I saw that this palette was a twilight palette and that each shade matched one of the wolves' fur colors, then I would instantly want it a lot more and would probably have it on my wish list, even though these aren't the kinds of shadows I usually use, because that's just the power of a thoughtful brand collaboration. A lot of makeup brands have realized that they can make a bunch of money if they collaborate with some sort of franchise or like a TV show that people love, but some of them haven't quite realized that if they do it half-heartedly and just sort of slap a logo on something without trying to make the collection actually make sense, 
then they're gonna disappoint their fans because of what could have been and they're not really taking full advantage of their opportunity. The final palette that I designed is called Forks, and it has shades named after the non-supernatural parts of Bella's life after she left Arizona. This palette's center shade is a navy blue named Chief Swan. No matter how you feel about Twilight in general, you've gotta love Charlie, he's fantastic. At the top, there's a cheerful yellow named Kitchen Cabinets because of Renee's decision to inject some sunshine into the house. Next is Meadow, a yellowy green like the color of grass being hit with sunlight as a vampire shows his human girlfriend what happens to his skin when it's sunny. On a related note, the next shade is Too Green, which is how Bella describes Forks when she first arrives due to all the vegetation she isn't used to seeing. It's not quite a forest green, it's more of a pine trees looming behind a light mist or fog sort of green. The bottom shade is Cloudy, the color of an overcast sky. To the left is Spartans, a maroony brick color like the exterior of Forks High School and named after their mascot. The last shade here is Truck, a faded orangey red to represent Bella's noisy, faithful, super old vehicle. While we're on the subject of things to put on your eyes, let me tell you about my plan for Twilight eyeliners. Twiliners? Anyway, uh, one of the parts of vampire lore in this universe is that a vampire's eyes will change colors depending on their diet. I thought it would be neat to design the eyeliners with that in mind. So there's a black called Thirsty, a sinister red called Hunter, and a golden honey sort of color called Vegetarian. I don't really have many eyeliners, and none of the ones I have are anywhere near these colors, so these are lip products, but imagine them as eyeliners instead. If we move along down the face, the next subject would be the highlighter and blush that I thought of. The whole vampire sparkling in the sun thing is one of the most mocked parts about Twilight, but I happen to think it's fun and unexpected to have the deadly monsters be glittery when touched by something that traditionally is supposed to burn them. Either way, it only made sense to have a super sparkly white highlighter named Sunlight. I struggled to get a swatch that was sparkly enough to match my imaginary version, but picture a complete glitter bomb of a highlighter and you'll get the idea. Most people will probably either hate this product or only use it on their eyes instead of their cheekbones, but it would be a lame Twilight collection if this wasn't a part of it. Blush is kind of a weird thing to swatch, and it also doesn't seem to show up very well on camera unless I go crazy with it, which I did today, so hopefully my cheeks don't look just totally white this time. Um, so this is the blush that I chose and named Bella. She didn't get an eyeshadow shade named after her, but I thought a blush seemed appropriate because of how often the books mention her doing that. Each lipstick is named after one of the four books. Twilight is a gentle pink color, a sort of neutral starting point. New Moon, which is the color that I'm wearing today, is a moody brown that sort of resembles Wolf Jacob's fur and also represents a darker time for Bella emotionally. The color I wanted for Eclipse is a fiery orange red like Victoria's hair, but that color doesn't really look good on my skin tone, so I don't have it in lipstick form or nail polish form or eyeshadow form. So this was as close as I could get, and I'm sorry about that. I'll try to find a better picture of an orangey red lipstick and put that in here instead, because this is just a sparkly lip gloss that does not look anything like what I wanted it to. Anyway, the last lipstick is Breaking Dawn, which is a vampy, <laughs> blood red. On the tube of each lipstick, I would want to have the imagery of the book covers represented, so an apple, a flower, a ribbon, and some chess pieces. The three lip glosses are my last actual idea for this collection. The Edward gloss is a sheer white full of sparkle, Bella is a blushy sort of pink, and Jacob's gloss is a slightly reddish, slightly brownish color with some shimmer to it. Now for some silly ideas. The obvious joke product here would be a setting powder or even just a foundation that has a whole bunch of sparkle mixed into it, and it would be useful for like cosplay purposes and probably not much else. Since the three palettes from before are clearly not enough, I also thought of a fourth palette idea themed around the various cars used in these stories. A silver for Edward's Volvo, a yellow for Alice's Porsche, the red I showed you earlier for Bella's truck, a true red for Rosalie's convertible, another red for Emmett's Jeep, and yet another red for Jacob's Rabbit, and then a blue for Tyler's van that almost wished Bella. This was never intended to be one of the serious palettes, it was a joke from the beginning, but I don't think I realized when I first started thinking about this that this many of the cars were red, because I'd totally forgotten what Emma's Jeep even looked like and I had to go look it up in the book again, and I had this idea in my head that Jacob's car was a light yellow for some reason, and I still have no idea where that came from, because I don't think the books ever said what color his car was, and the movies gave him a red car, so maybe when I was first reading these books I googled Volkswagen Rabbit to see what the car looked like, and there was a yellow one there or something? So this palette turned out to be a stupid idea for several reasons. 
So that's what I came up with when I decided to design a Twilight-themed makeup collection. I didn't have many ideas about the packaging this time, but I'm sure there are plenty of artistic people who could figure out how to make that all work. Thank you for watching. I hope this was interesting and that you think that my decisions made sense. If there's something else you would like to see in this style of video, or if you have ideas for Twilight-related makeup, then please share those thoughts in the comments. Stay safe and wear a mask in public.